Let's talk about choosing a camera, what features you should be looking for, what kind of camera you should be looking for. Um, I have here a Lumix GH5. This was released in 2017. And you could probably get one now used for about $600, $700. This is a mirrorless camera. Sometimes you'll hear the term mirrorless or DSLR. Um, used interchangeably. For our purposes, the details of that don't matter so much. What you should know is this style of camera, which looks like a photography camera, has interchangeable lenses and is designed to give you maximum manual control of settings. And I think that's probably the best way to talk about this class of camera. You have some other options if you're recording video for something like YouTube. You could also use a camcorder, which is traditionally much more focused on video, but tends to have a non-interchangeable lens, tends to be more designed for automatic shooting with a larger zoom and, and uh, uh, automatic zoom rather than having to manually zoom. Different use cases, but probably this is more the style of camera nowadays that you would use for YouTube filming. You could also consider using a webcam if you're doing everything through your PC, or even some people use mobile phones, which now have quite good cameras. I'm going to recommend that if you're serious about this, you probably need something like this, a mirrorless camera of this style with interchangeable lenses, but we'll talk a little bit about the other alternatives later. You should also know that when you go to buy a camera like this, um, they come built with different sensor sizes. This is what's called a micro four thirds sensor size, which is relatively small sensor size, and they go all the way up to full frame sensors, which is what you tend to think of when you use a film camera. In general, the larger the sensor size, the better performance in low light, um, and I guess in general, the, the more you can get that depth of shallow depth of field effect, but also the more expensive, the full frame digital cameras are more expensive. And there's some issue with the potential of overheating at when you're filming at high resolution. But in general, uh, for the same amount of money, you would prefer a larger sensor size. All right, what should you be looking for when you're looking to buy a camera? I'm gonna suggest that you want to find a 4K camera. Now, it is, it's tempting to think, well, the higher resolution, the better the quality of the image. Um, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, the quality of the image you get is going to depend on the quality of the sensor, the resolution, and the quality of the optics of the lens. Those things all interact. But assuming you've picked a camera with a good optical quality, good lens, good camera, good sensor, um, I do think that as of 2022, you need to be thinking about 4K. Now, when you're filming just a person speaking, um, the difference between 4K and 1080p is not that is not important. And in fact, it can get so sharp that it's unpleasant to look at. However, if you're going to be forming filming board game footage, especially if you're for your top-down camera, 4K has a number of serious advantages. And I think, especially for your top-down, you should be filming in 4K. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason might be obvious to you. You might think, okay, the 4K is going to have a sharper, clearer picture. Um, for people who are watching it on a large monitor in 4K. And that's true. Now, not, not that many people as of 2022 are going to qualify for watching 
your videos on a very large monitor at 4K. So most people may not benefit from that 4K resolution, at least currently, although you may want to future-proof your videos. However, you will find when you start editing your top-down footage that you frequently want to zoom in on an area. So panning and zooming, if you want to highlight a specific area of the screen when you're top down and zoom in, then the 4K resolution makes a big difference. And so my recommendation is you should always be shooting your top down footage in 4K. I shoot everything in 4K. I think it future proofs it, but you should realize that shooting in 4K increases the file sizes hugely, which increases the transfer time that it takes to move from your memory cards to the computer, and it makes YouTube take much longer to process the video. So everything takes longer with 4K, but I do think that's probably what you should be filming in. All right, let's think about what other, op what other options you have. Um, you've got a uh, frame rate to decide on. So if you were shooting sports footage, then you might want a very high frame rate, 60 frames per second or even higher. But if you're shooting a board game where action is limited and a talking head where action is very limited, I think probably the highest you have to reasonably thinking about is 30 frames per second, which is probably the most common frame rate. I shoot in 24 frames per second, which is more uh, traditional frame rate for film. You'll see most of the settings that I use on my channel are, are focused on a sort of a filmic look. That's a personal preference. 30 frames per second, 24 frames per second. You should experiment with those and decide what you like best. The only time you need a camera that can go higher than 30 frames per second for your board gaming is if you occasionally want to shoot footage of sort of um, uh, close-up macro footage of board game pieces. Maybe, you know, if you, want to, if you want to zoom in, you see that occasional what they call B-roll footage of board game components of pieces dropping or rotating around them. And the traditional way to film that is to ramp up your camera to something like 120 frames per second and film it and then slow it down in the editing. So if you think you're going to be doing uh, that kind of stuff, then maybe you should be looking for a camera that can record at high frame rates, 100 plus frames per second in 4K. Otherwise, it's not that important. Um, Okay, let's talk about other features of a camera. When you look for a camera, I don't recommend you buy a Lumix GH5. It's an old camera. There's a GH5, there's a GH5S, which is 2018 or so. Um, but I will tell you about some features I think are important. Okay, here's one. You're going to need a camera that can do clean HDMI out. So almost all of these cameras, probably all of the cameras of this style have HDMI output that lets you watch the footage being recorded on a monitor. However, what you might not know is that some of the time you're going to want that display to show everything, all the information that you see on the back of the camera display. That means you want to see the current settings uh, for your ISO and aperture. We'll talk all about that in a second. You'll want to see it blinking when it's recording, how much time is left, all that. It's very useful to see all that on the monitor. And in fact, that's what I'm looking at here behind the lens. I can see all the settings on the camera. I can see that it's recording. I can see the status of the autofocus and the lighting and exposure. That's great. But if you're going to be doing live stream, you need to be able to turn all of that off because the live stream is going to be fed through your HDMI output. So you need to be able to turn off the display of all the settings. That's called clean HDMI. Different cameras might have different names for it. But there's one feature you need to look for in your camera. OK. Another feature is an articulated display. So you can see on this camera, 
I can rotate it out so that it's visible from the front so that if you're looking at a camera that's looking at yourself, you can see the screen. That's going to be important, especially this camera that's uh, videoing now. It's got its back against a monitor on the wall. The only way I can see the display is if it's turned around to face the front. So that's important. Some cameras only can only face either the back or the front. They tend to lift up so that they are visible above it. This camera is what they call fully articulating, so it can also turn this way. Why is that important? Well, for my top-down camera, for example, I like the display to be facing sideways because I can't get behind, uh, above it. It's six feet off the ground, seven feet off the ground, and I don't want to have to look underneath it. So having a fully articulated display is quite useful, especially for your top-down camera. Here's another absolutely essential feature is a mic in jack. This camera has one here. Uh, all of these cameras have built-in microphones, but they're completely unusable. You could never use the audio, the mic built into your camera for a real YouTube channel. Um, if you didn't have a mic jack, you could record it on a separate device and then bring it into your editor to um, sync up the sound, but you do not want to have to be doing that. So you want a good audio uh, port in your camera that can take um, a normal 3.5 millimeter microphone, and you might want to look into some uh, some reviews of the quality of that audio and make sure it's good. Okay, another feature, absolutely essential, is being able to power the camera through an AC power line so that you don't have to worry about running out of battery life. Everything in my setup is configured to run off an AC power line. In fact, it runs through a UPS battery backup just in case there's a power surge or a power outage. It would be crazy to rely on batteries in your cameras. Now most cameras have some form of what they call a dummy battery AC power line. So it basically looks like a battery but it plugs in and runs to power. That's fine. Your camera probably has something like that available but you want to check to make sure. Okay. Another feature that I think is highly, I would highly recommend looking for in your camera is some sort of personalized menu system. So um, you might be shocked if you haven't used one of these cameras before to see how many settings there are. There are hundreds of settings in this camera for changing hundreds of esoteric options and features organized into subcategories, it is overwhelming. And what you'll find after some time is that there are probably a dozen or less settings that you really need access to at any one time. And you'll find yourself having to access those settings frequently, like formatting the card and uh, turning that HDMI clean to not clean output and things like that, turning the stabilizer on and off. Having a My Menu feature where you can put your menu items that you care about, that you're interested in most, into that category um, is a huge help. Let's talk about some features that aren't so important. Um, this camera comes with a time code sync port that I thought was going to be important. I thought I have multiple cameras. I'm going to need to sync up their time codes, which are sort of, it's like an internal clock to better synchronize the footage. Turns out that is useless. It's not accurate enough to use. And all of the video editing software can now sync up footage from multiple cameras by their audio. Not important. Headphone jack sometimes gets recommended as an important feature so you can plug in your headphones and listen to the quality of the audio to make sure it's coming in well. 
not going to be useful. Once you get your camera set up and your mic set up and you test out the footage, you will never be plugging back into this to listen to it. Simply not important. Um, I think if you had a choice, because the settings can be so overwhelming, I mean, it's really hard to um, overestimate how many settings and how confusing some of it can be, especially if you're new to all this. But given that, I think if you, if you had a choice, it would be nice to use the same cameras for your top down, for your front view, rather than having to learn how to use different cameras with different settings, or at least stick to one brand. Um, when you're choosing a camera, one of the things, there are lots of different brands that have very well-regarded cameras, Canon, Sony, Panasonic, those are some of the main ones. Um, one of the things that differs between these camera brands is the autofocus quality. Panasonic, this camera is a Panasonic uh, Lumix, has particularly bad autofocus. As of 2022, their cameras in general have bad autofocus. Now, what that means is that I normally have autofocus off. I never turn autofocus on, and that's uh, appropriate for something like this, where you want I want I want full control of the focus, and it's not going to be changing. But occasionally, you'll see someone who has a board game channel where their top-down camera, which is showing the board, where they occasionally lift something up like a card to the top camera to get a closer view of it. If you're going to do something like that, you need very good, fast autofocus on your top-down camera, and you need it to not be defocusing while you're having while you're doing your video, which is what some of these cameras do. They occasionally lose focus or something confuses it and makes it think it should be focusing somewhere else. So in general, I recommend you turn off your autofocus, but if you do think you want to have a camera above you that you're going to raise items to for a close-up, rather than having a third camera, which is what I do when I want a close-up, then you might want to look for a camera with better autofocus ability. Um, you can pay thousands of dollars for a good camera, and people do. Some of these YouTube channels are filming using $3,000 cameras. I do think you can probably get away with a $400, $500 camera, but that doesn't uh, include the cost of a lens, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you might think about using a webcam, webcams, multiple webcams, in fact, with a PC to do your recording. With these cameras, you're recording into an SD card most of the time if you're going to edit the footage. You're recording into an SD card, which you then transfer your, to your PC. But if you really wanted to save money, you could consider using web cameras and recording directly onto your PC. Maybe we'll cut now to some footage showing some quality of a good webcam, but you'll see that a webcam is not quite the quality of a good mirrorless camera. And the lack of lens and optical zooming does uh, make for some compromises. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> 